Hi, this is Sudeep, and I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with StatPro. In the last session, we had solved the reactions of a simple supported beam, which was pinned at one end and having a roller support on the other. But the difference with the earlier problems was the roller support in this case was supported or was being held on an inclined plane, which was inclined at an angle to the horizontal. In this session, we will discuss the concept of how we could model such inclined support in Stat Pro. But before we go forward, please do take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you are new to this channel to join us in this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with Stat Pro. And for those who has been around for some time and had been able to derive some value out of this channel, please do hit the like button. Just a quick recap on the problem that we had solved last time. This is the simply supported beam, and as you can see, node number one was supported by a pin support, and node number two was supported by a roller support. But the speciality of this roller support is that it is on a plane that is inclined to the horizontal at a slope of three verticals to four horizontal. And we could see that the load that is acting on the beam are two vertical loads, 160 kip load, which is acting in the downward direction or in the negative direction of the global y-axis, a 40 kip load, which is acting in the upward direction, vertically upwards, or in the positive direction of the global y-axis, and a 50 kips of inclined load, which is inclined at a slope of three horizontal to four vertical. Now, to understand this problem more clearly as to how we could define a roller support, let us, for illustration purpose, remove the depiction of the roller support from node number two, and let us draw a line, a a dash, parallel to the plane which held the roller support. Now, let us consider a line that is dropped perpendicularly from the line a a dash from node number two. And let us draw a reference point arbitrarily on the perpendicular line to a a dash. Now, the angle with the horizontal of the line a a dash, let us call it it as theta. Now, as we remember, this plane was at a slope of three horizontal, I'm sorry, three vertical to four horizontal, and thus the tangent of theta would be equal to three by four. Now, the angle that the perpendicular line to a a dash from node two would make with the horizontal would be given by pi by 2 minus theta or 90 degree minus theta and thus the slope of this line would be given by 10 of pi by 2 minus theta which would be equal to cotangent of theta and cotangent of theta would be given by 1 by tan theta or the inverse of tan theta and thus we would evaluate the tangent of pi by 2 minus theta as 4 by 3 because tan theta has been calculated to be 3 by 4. Now, in other words, this would mean that to locate the reference point, which is shown in red, we would need to move three units in the horizontal direction and drop four units in the downward direction to locate the reference point. Now remember that the movement of three units in the horizontal direction and four units in the vertical direction is with reference to node number two at which the inclined roller support is located. Now what is this reference point that we have drawn in red and why are we talking about it? Well this reference point would be used to define the axis system 
about which we would define the inclined support system. We will explain that in a moment. But before we do that, we would need to explain the three different ways that is available in Stat Pro by which we can define the reference point. So let us see that first. So the first method of defining a reference point is by specifying the relative distances from node number two in the global axis system. So remember, in our case, we had identified the reference point by moving three units from node number two in the horizontal direction, which is in the positive direction of the global x-axis, and thus the relative distance that we would specify for x would be x equal to plus three. And then we had specified a four units of movement in the vertical downward direction, which would mean that we are moving in the negative direction of the global y-axis, and thus we would specify the relative distance of y as point minus four. And finally, since this is a planar structure, the z distance would be specified as zero. So if we specify the values as we have just described, we would identify the reference point. The second method of identifying the reference point is by specifying the absolute coordinates of the reference point system. Now, let us consider that our node number two has a coordinates of x, y, and z, and the reference point has coordinates of x1, y1, and z1. Now, we already know that our value, uh, the relative distances in the x direction would be plus three, and thus x1, which is the x coordinate in the global axis system of the reference point would be equal to x plus three. Similarly, y1 would be calculated as y minus four, and z1 would be calculated as zero. The third method of defining the reference point is if there is an existing node which can be defined as a reference point, we only need to specify the node number. So these are the three methods by which we can specify the reference point. But generally, the one that we use, the one method that we use is the first one thus by specifying the relative distances. And this is what we will do when we actually do the start pro model. But now the question is, how do we define the axis system to define the inclined support at node number two? Let us see. Now we know that node number two has the inclined support system and we now know the position of the reference point by any of the three methods that we have just described. Now, let us imagine a member that starts at node number two and goes through the reference point. In such a case, the local x-axis of that member, that imaginary member, would be pointing from node number two towards the reference point. Now, imagine the beta zero configuration of this imaginary member. So, as per the rules, what we would need to do to identify the local z-axis of this imaginary member is that we will take the cross product of the local x-axis with the global y-axis, and thus we will identify the direction of the local z-axis, which would be an axis that would be pointing out of the page towards us. That would be the positive direction of the local z-axis. And then if we take the cross product of local z with the local x, you would be able to identify the local y-axis of that imaginary member. Now, if you have not at all understood how we came to this particular conclusion, please do visit this session, the link of which is appearing on the top right of your screen right now, where 
we have discussed the beta 0 configuration of a general member which is not inclined to any of the global axis system. Now that we have identified the local x and local y, we can easily define the roller support. Now note that the, that inclined roller support will be defined with respect to this axis system or this local axis system of that imaginary beam. So what would that mean? That would mean that in case we have a roller support, the roller would have a constraint of movement in the x direction, but it would be free to move in the y direction, right? And there would be another freedom of movement of node number two in the xy plane, which would be the rotation about the z axis. And thus, this roller support, this inclined roller support, with respect to this inclined axis system, which has been used to define the inclined roller support, we can define it by specifying a fixed but fy mz condition. Now, if you have a doubt as to how we have used the fixed but support for a roller, you can visit the session that is appearing on the top right of your screen right now to understand that. I hope you have enjoyed the session today. This was really interesting. In the next session, we will actually model this structure that we have discussed in Start Pro. And we will use the concepts that we have discussed today to do the same. So it is very important that you are absolutely clear with the concepts. If you have any question, please do ask in the comment section below. I hope to see you in the next session. If you have liked this session, please do hit the like button. I will see you in the next session. Till then, bye-bye.